They are not only microbes in our bodies and on our body surfaces, but also in the environment. And microbes come from people, come from animals, come from plants, from soil. You already heard that. And a very nice example is studying children who have very strong contact with those microbes. And these are children from farmers. And so we go to villages where there are some farming children and some non-farming children. So in my part of the world, that would be a typical farmhouse. And there's a very close proximity of animals which live in that part below the wood and people. So if you go through the main door, you would go the hallway and maybe go one door or maybe two doors and you would be right in the stable where they keep usually animals. So this would be where you would end. These are family run businesses. So father and mother work in there. And the children usually spend a lot of time with these parents. They help the parents. They play there because they like the animals. Usually the cats and kittens are there. And so they get exposed to this incredible variety of microbial exposures that go along with this. This is important because the timing is the important factor here. Asthma, allergies, infections all develop very early in life. And so if you want to protect from these uh, diseases, you want to have these exposures very, very early on. And you need the animals, you need the plant, and you need the milk that these, par that these people produce. And this is a sustained effect. So if you go at school age into these villages and you ask for asthma, allergies, hay fever, and atopic dermatitis in children aged 6 to 12, you see all of them have much less if they were grown and raised on a farm. And there are even other farming populations which are even much more interesting. These are the Amish people in the US. They emigrated from Switzerland, not far from here, and they have a very traditional farm style. And you can see also the little kids are very early on exposed to these animals and to these environments where they inhale and of course they also ingest because they have it on their hands. So we made a project comparing Swiss farm children, non-farm children, farm children and Amish children because they come from the same uh, sort. And you can see the Amish in light blue columns, they almost have nothing. They don't have hay fever, they have very little positive allergy test and the little asthma they have is very, very mild. So if we go back to our European populations, we can have the same effect if these kids are exposed to both the milk and the stable environment in the first year of life, and then asthma goes down from 12% to 1%, hay fever from 15 to 3%, or a positive allergy test from 33 to 12%. So it's quite significant effect which have been shown in many studies. It's not only about asthma and allergies, it's also about infections in early life. Rhinitis and otitis, and one example is here the milk, if they consume their own raw milk, you see much less of rhinitis and otitis, and it's much better than boiled farm milk or pasteurized milk, which hints that there might be something in the process of what we're doing to milk. And so the question, of course, is what is it? We know that it's not the microbes uh, at this stage. We know that this is things that are destroyed by heat. We think it's proteins and other substances. And I think it calls for you guys who are in the milk industry to try to come up with new ways how to process that milk. The other question, of course, that we say is the stable. So what is in the stable? And what is it that these kids inhale or are exposed to? In these stables, there are myriads of microbes, yeast, fungi, phages, viruses. But how can we, how can we measure them? And you can do it by culture. Or you can do exactly what Rob said, we can do it by DNA. This is just an electron microscope picture of what you would find in these tables. They're fungi, they're bacteria, but you want to know exactly which are the ones. And so we used exactly the methods that Rob is doing. It's a DNA fingerprinting. It's like knowing which are the bacteria and microbes in these environments. And what we see is that there is a huge diversity. And with this diversity, this is the, the, the red bars, the more of these bacteria you have, the less these children have asthma. And this is true for bacteria and for fungi. So it's not a magic bullet in these environments. But the question is, it, is it the more the better? Or is in that diversity, like in a minestrone, is there a certain composition which is particularly good? And we think of this as being a microbial cocktail. And there are gram positives, there are gram negatives, there are listeria. And there's also some fungi, which is, for example, urothium and penicillium. So it's not the magic bullet, it's not the more the better, but it's a certain uh, consistency. We took this into animal models, also like Rob has shown, into mice. And we can completely prevent asthma by giving these mice to inhale either the bugs themselves 
or the extracts of these dust. So in mice, we can already prevent asthma. We know how it works. And I think for us, the big question is how can we translate this to children that grow up in New York City and are not fortunate to live on the farms and maybe really prevent asthma and allergies?